In this video, we're gonna do some retro gaming on the Raspberry Pi 4, but this time we're gonna overclock this little single board computer to 2.1 gigahertz on the processor, and then we're gonna overclock the GPU to 750. Now, this is pretty extreme. I've seen people go up to 2250, uh, you know, that's really pretty crazy, 2150, but this is gonna be stable, and we're really gonna be able to see how PSP and Nintendo 64 and a Naomi game all perform with this overclock. I did see significant performance benefits, and with the proper cooling, you can absolutely run this as your daily driver. So without further ado, let's overclock, let's check it out, do some gameplay, and then talk cooling. So I am rocking V-Man's re-release 512 gigabyte image, and this image is nice because it has the overclock scripts already in the emulation station menu. So you can do all of this without a keyboard. I'm just using an Xbox 360 controller. As you see here, the max overclock, the 21, I think it's like 47 or so. That's, um, there's a big article done on this and they're saying like that's the best before it gets really crazy and it's unstable. Um, we'll talk about cooling later on in this video, but if you just have something decent like an ice cooler or the armor case or, you know, a nice big fan and some heat sinks, you should be able to get away with this. If, you know, you can spend a little extra money if you're going to be doing extended periods of time. Now, I'm just running a Pi Armor case for this video with dual small fans, and I'll show you those solutions at the end of the video. But back to this, we are going to be overclocking to 2100 uh, megahertz, which is pretty darn fast. And our GPU is clocked as high as you can get it, um, that you can do it in the config file here. Um, this is what it actually looks like on the configuration file, but that's what that script is doing for you. It's just updating your configuration file, and then it's going to reboot the Pi. And I didn't have any stability issues at all in this video. Um, here you can see I'm actually checking my Raspberry Pi um, in terminal as well. So let's go ahead and boot up and play some games, and then we'll talk about cooling. So as you see here, I do have to do frame skipping one, and I try to get away with 2x PSP here. Now I probably should have started with maybe not the worst game, you know, this is a really hard game to emulate. The games do get better throughout this video. As you see, it looks good, but this is definitely laggy, and a lot of people would not play like this, and I understand that. Lowering to 1x though, all of a sudden gets pretty much playable. No problem whatsoever. Um, you know, some people might say it's still not playable, but it, it's decent. It's good, especially for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now we get into Mortal Kombat, and I tried to get it to look as good as possible. And you can see at 6x, that's just way too high. I, I was kind of greedy here. But you'll notice that I lower it in a moment. It just it looks great. Like, the cutscene here looks really good. On a, and it's, again, I'm running full screen. Um, so what I want to do though eventually with Mortal Kombat is get it to a point where I don't have to frame skip because it looks really good when you're not frame skipping and then at the highest res. And what you're going to see is I can get it to about 3 or 4x, which is really good all things considering. So um, after we do PSP here, we're going to play some Nintendo 64 and some Naomi and those settings were all um, pretty standard, not high res. Um, now. The graphics themselves are not that impressive, but I would say the frames were really impressive. It wasn't much frame skip in GoldenEye or in Killer Instinct as well as um, SNK2. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of the gameplay and then we'll talk cooling.
So as far as cooling options, this is the case that I use for this video. It's plenty good. It's one of the cheaper options. It looks good. It's quiet. I really like it. Now, if you want to go a little more extreme, just go with this one here, the, the, the full stack. The small stack is still really good as well. Um, I highly recommend both. Uh, these will perform slightly better than this one. I did a whole test on it. As you can see, the peak numbers, you can actually get it, you know, I know eight or nine degrees is pretty significant. But there's also, you know, a lot of wiggle room in there as well. And this is plenty good to get you at the 2.1 gigahertz. So this would be my first option if you don't mind, you know, how large it is. Um, it's the second option as far as maximum cooling. But as far as just like, it's totally fine. You're going to be good. And it's a case. And it doesn't look ridiculous. I'd go with this one here. You can always liquid cool as well. But <laughs> I'll put links to both of these if you're interested. All right, final thoughts. Would I keep my Pi like this at the 2100 gigahertz or megahertz for a long period of time, put it in an arcade cabinet? Yes, with the proper with the proper cooling, I would have no issues whatsoever with this. Now, if I lived in Florida in a hot garage with very little ventilation, you know, I'd want to make sure I have a really nice case and I might, you know, just watch it a little bit more. But where I'm at and, and like this, and I, as you all know, I've made you know hundreds of videos on the Raspberry Pi. I've overclocked Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, 4s, the 0. And I've just never had, I've had stability issues in the past where you might get like crashes you weren't getting before. That's really the sign to me that, hey, you know, it might either your cooling's not adequate enough or you might be, you know, uh, going a little too extreme. But with this build right here, I didn't get one single crash. I was playing for hours. I was checking my temps, nothing nothing crazy at all. So with the proper cooling, these little single board computers can definitely be stretched out quite a bit. So I wouldn't necessarily be afraid about it. If this is your only computer in the world and you really can't afford another one, I would not be overclocking. But for those of you out there that just want a little bit more oomph and you know unlock the potential of these boards you can absolutely overclock it's very very easy to do as you saw and you know the increased performance in some of these higher uh required requirement games you know like n64 psp dreamcast naomi atomis wave you will see improvement as you saw in this video so that's what i think let me know what you all think don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one